Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you all about Au Pied de Caron Prison. Here at Haunted Montreal, we bring you ghost stories in both English and French every Saturday. Before we get into today's story, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we have a new tale to share. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back and thank you so much. We're so happy you're here. Now, without further ado, let's get spooky. Lurking below the Jacques Cartier Bridge is the historic Au Pied de Caron prison, a popular location with ghost hunters and paranormal investigators. The sturdy neoclassical limestone building is a dark reminder of one of the more violent chapters in Montreal history. Au Pied de Caron prison was originally proposed to replace the decrepit and scandal-plagued Montreal jail on the Champ de Mars during the 1820s. As discussed in our previous video on the topic, prisoners had both starved and frozen to death while in custody in the old jail. This prompted plans for a new prison. Drafted by architect John Wells in 1825, the blueprints were rumored to be based on the notorious Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. A change in prison philosophy allowed for more solitary confinement and less fraternizing among the inmates. Designed to house 276 prisoners, Au Pied de Caron opened in 1836 at the foot of St. Mary's Current, a powerful and dangerous rapid in the St. Lawrence River. Barely one year into its existence, the prison was overwhelmed with action when the Patriots' Rebellion erupted in 1837. This wave of revolutionary furor, despite facing serious setbacks, would go on to shape the very Canada that we know today. In 1837, tensions were simmering over political reform in what was then known as Lower Canada, the territory acquired when the British conquered New France in 1760. In a nutshell, the citizens wanted responsible government and a more effective democracy. At the time, elected officials had almost no power. The movement demanded democratic reforms such as an elected legislative council, as opposed to the system in use whereby members were appointed for life by the British Crown. From the early 1800s, the Patriot Party, led by James Stewart and Louis-Joseph Papineau, had been agitating for change. Inspired by the American Revolution, the Patriot Movement was a liberal republic and a nationalistic reaction against British domination over what was once a French colony. After hearing various grievances from the citizens, Papineau wrote 92 resolutions and delivered them to Governor Dalhousie. When the British government rejected his requests, Papineau began to organize protests and assemblies, which sparked passions and stoked calls for a revolution against the colonial government. This resulted in a series of escalating conflicts, and the struggle turned bloody. A first armed conflict occurred in 1837. 26 members of the Patriot movement had been charged with illegal activities and chose to resist their arrest. Papineau fled into exile in the United States, and rebels began organizing in the countryside surrounding Montreal. On November 23, 1837, the Patriots scored their first and only victory when, under the leadership of Wilfred Nelson, they defeated British forces at the village of Saint-Denis. The British government reacted with fury. Commanding officer John Colborne called thousands of redcoats into action. The British soldiers set their sights on the rebels and defeated them at St. Charles on November 25th. In St. Eustache on December 14th, the British forces were particularly cruel. The Patriots, led by Jean-Olivier Chenier and Amory Girard, had barricaded themselves in the convent, the Catholic church, the rectory, and the manor in the center of the village. Without mercy, British troops set fire to the buildings and then began shelling the Catholic Church with cannon fire. As the rebels jumped out the windows to escape the blaze, British soldiers picked them off one by one before making a final assault. This disastrous battle lasted at least four hours, and by the end of it, 70 Patriots had been killed. The British troops then went on to pillage and ransack the village of St. Eustache and terrorize much of the surrounding countryside. On December 5th, the government declared a state of martial law and hundreds of rebels were arrested for high treason. Their destination was the newly opened Au Pied de Caron prison. Designed to house less than 300 prisoners, the prison became severely overcrowded when approximately 1,300 suspected rebels were packed in following the armed uprising. 
To punish the political prisoners, in addition to the harsh prison sentences, 58 were deported to Australia and 29 were executed for treason. 12 rebels were hanged at the gates of the prison where a scaffold was erected on execution days. One particularly gruesome execution on February 15, 1839, saw the hanging of a man who some say was falsely accused, notary Francois-Marie Thomas, Chevalier de Lorimier. One of his co-accused escaped the gallows only by testifying against the father of several children. That day also saw four of his other companions drop from the gallows. Sometime later, a discovery was made in Delorimier's old cell. On the day of his execution, he had written a heart-wrenching letter to his wife and hid it between some stones. So upsetting was the whole episode that in 1883, the city of Montreal renamed the street where the prison is located Delorimier Street after a man widely considered to be a martyr. Other prisoners had to languish in the jail as they served lengthy sentences, including one man named Francois-Xavier Desjardins, who is connected to a ghost story in the bucolic off-island suburb of Hudson. Desjardins bought a property there in 1824 and converted its main floor into a general store. He was a patriot and began using his storefront for political purposes, including the stockpiling of guns and ammunition in the basement and secret political meetings with other patriots. According to one legend, a young servant girl who was working in the home overheard the plot and felt urged to inform the authorities. However, the patriots discovered her plan and to ensure they were not discovered, they murdered her. To cover up the crime, they buried her in the basement of the general store. Today, the quaint Auberge Willow Inn occupies the site and apparently the girl's mischievous ghost, nicknamed Maud, still haunts the building. It is said that just after Halloween, during the month of November, her activities become more and more frequent. She is known to sing in the hallways, knock things over, slam doors, and stack rocks at the door of room number eight. She also gives off the unmistakable whiff of perfume when passing by. Maud is undoubtedly one of the most infamous ghosts haunting the off-island suburban community of Hudson. But returning to Au Pied de Coron prison, following the rebellion and its violent aftermath, things became quieter. In operation from 1836 to 1912, the prison was eventually replaced by Bordeaux prison, which is still in use today. Following the move to Bordeaux, Au Pied de Coron prison was abandoned and sat empty for almost a decade, developing a creepy atmosphere and a reputation for being haunted. In 1921, the old prison was taken over by the SAQ, which realized its potential as an ideal location to warehouse copious amounts of alcohol in the cool cells under the building. The SAQ later renovated the complex and a fourth floor was added to the building. The original roof was completely replaced and a new wing was also added to the original structure, preparing the way for the head office of the SAQ to move in. The wall surrounding the prison was partially demolished, with only the east wall and original front gate left intact. The men convicted of war crimes during the rebellion, today largely seen as martyrs, are now honored as patriots with a memorial which was built at the site where scaffolds were once erected to execute the rebels. The work of Alfred La Liberté, the Monument aux Patriotes, was unveiled on June 24, 1926. On each of its three sides, bronze carvings represent patriots Wolfred Nelson, Louis-Joseph Papineau, and Chevalier de Lorimier. The area where the monument is located is now called the Place of the Patriots. In 1978, Au Pied de Coron prison was classified as a historic monument because of its architecture, history, and connection to the now-revered Patriots. It was also used as the location for Pierre Faladreau's film February 15, 1839, which takes place entirely at the prison. In 2003, a basement museum was opened called Le Prison de Patriot Exhibition Center. Here, visitors can wander the old locations of some jail cells and learn all about the failed rebellion through a series of storyboards and exhibitions. Visitors might also possibly experience something otherworldly. According to Paranormal Investigations, there are several ghosts haunting the old prison and its grounds at the foot of the St. Lawrence River. According to many sources, the ghosts of the former prisoners and guards still haunt the building and former prison grounds. The apparitions of the executed men and other prisoners who died on the site have been spotted, along with those tasked to guard them. Hidden bodies are also rumored to be buried on the grounds. There is said to be a host of paranormal activity in the old prison. 
shadowy figures, light anomalies, unexplained mists, disembodied voices, weird feelings of unease, not being wanted, not being alone, anger, despair, violent thoughts, and physical illness. People also hear phantom footsteps, uh, there are electrical disturbances, objects disappearing and then reappearing, doors and windows opening and closing, lights turning on and off, and other unexplained phenomena. In June 2013, Isabel Verge of the Journal de Montréal interviewed author and ghost specialist Christian Page in an article called Le Fantôme du Siège Social de la SAQ, translation Ghosts of the SAQ Headquarters. Page explained that Au Pied de Courant Prison is one of the most haunted sites in Montreal, according to witnesses. He elaborated that this is where a dozen patriots were executed. The basement of the place is still very gloomy, and while today it is the headquarters of the SAQ, some employees will never go down into the basement at night. He suggested that the ghosts of the patriots who give employees the jitters have returned from the dead because they are always seeking a certain justice. There are all sorts of strange manifestations in the museum. According to Page, some claim to have heard sounds, voices, and murmurs, doors that open and close, and objects that would move themselves. Some also reported seeing men in uniform, uh, old uniforms, and the place is not only haunted by patriots, but also by former guards. So there are, are many people who will testify to this. Occasionally, the administration of the SAQ allows paranormal investigations, which have turned up many examples of electronic voice phenomena thought to be spirits of the hanged men. Page suggested that the investigators discovered some interesting paranormal phenomena, saying they recorded murmurs, they felt all of these presences, and captured mysterious steam-like images that would drift in the camera. In another case, a local psychic visited Au Pied de Courant and detected a paranormal sort of feedback loop on the prison grounds. Almost like a cinematic replay, it involved a ghostly figure dressed in blue running quickly. She reported that, This one was actually very strange. It was a figure which kept running the same line over and over again, always at the same place and in the same direction, restarting at the same location. Similarly to a movie just being played on tape. It was just outside the prison building, a good length of it, maybe four meters, and she couldn't tell whether or not it was a guard, but could make out that he was dressed in blue and running very quickly. It didn't phase or change anything, whether they crossed the path or just stood and watched. With the sightings of so many apparitions, people wonder which former prisoners and guards might haunt Au Pied de Cran prison. François-Marie Thomas Chevalier de Lorimier, executed despite his probable innocence, is a good candidate. After passionately defending himself in court, the loving father was hanged for high treason because he had demanded responsible government with the Patriots. Following his death, his wife was unable to pay family debts, obliging her to renounce his estate, which left the family in poverty and ruin. Ironically, the government eventually conceded to the demands of the rebels and implemented responsible government in 1849. In this light, one might argue that the execution of Delorimier was all for nothing, perhaps prompting his ghost to return in search of justice. Might another spirit be François-Xavier Desjardins, the former owner of the general store in Hudson? If he was indeed involved in the murder of this servant girl, is it possible that he now roams the world of the living as punishment for this evil deed? Indeed, with over 1,300 patriots imprisoned at the height of the uprising, there are a lot of possibilities as to who the ghosts might be. It is also possible the fleeing ghost is one of the two known prisoners who managed to escape from Au Pied de Courant prison in 1838. The first was a grocer and patriot named Louis Lucier, who was accused of murdering George Weir, lieutenant of the 32nd Regiment. Incarcerated on January 2nd, 1838, he made his escape on June 22nd of the same year after somehow bribing a prison dog to assist him. I'm gonna need to know more about that one. Another man named Mr. Cook, who was not a patriot, but just a regular prisoner, broke out of jail with the help of his wife, who brought him carpentry tools during visits. Might the running ghost possibly be either of these two colorful characters? As for the jail guards allegedly haunting the site, who might they be? More research is needed into who these people were, what circumstances they lived and worked under, how they behaved on a day-to-day -day basis, and whether or not any of them experienced anything tragic or unexpected. With so many ghosts haunting the old prison, there's 
a lot of speculation into the mystery of who they might be. A lot of unpleasant history that would ultimately shape Canada unfolded at Au Pied de Caron prison. Today, the site's museum is testimony to the oppression and brutality of the colonial British government that existed in the 1800s. The ghosts that are said to haunt the creepy old jail should come as no surprise given the tragic history that unfolded on the site when patriots were unceremoniously hanged for making very reasonable demands. Could it be true that the spirits are seeking justice in a paranormal afterlife as suggested by some experts? On a footnote, in 2003, the Quebec government decided to rename May 24th Victoria Day originally after the British monarch and incidentally my birthday as well as National Patriots Day, or Journée Nationale de Patriot in French. Instead of celebrating an oppressive monarch, Quebec chose to venerate the rebels who opposed her in 1837 at the price of their lives. Whether or not this gesture appeased any of the ghosts haunting Au Pied de Caron prison is a matter of speculation. Only one thing is certain, Au Pied de Caron prison is widely regarded as one of Montreal's most haunted sites. Enter at your own risk. Are you a Montreal resident, or perhaps a tourist, who has experienced something strange at Au Pied de Caron prison? If so, we would love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories on what could be going on. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first video, we hope you'll stick around for the next one. We post videos in both French and English every Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by the talented Donovan King, it's all listed in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling tours. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll have a new video out for you next Saturday, but until then, stay spooky!